You're listening to the CD Baby. CD Baby. CD Baby DIY Musician Hey there, and welcome to episode number 49 of the CD Baby DIY Musician Podcast. My name is Kevin Bruner, your host for the show. And this week we're going to hear from Dave Cusick, who is the vice president at Berklee College of Music and responsible for managing their online music school. Well, over the years, Dave has had his hands in several landmark music tech developments, including things like the development of MIDI and the electronic drums. He's also an author and back in 2005 released a book that is still talked about today called The Future of Music. And if that wasn't enough, Dave spends plenty of time bringing the spirit of innovation to Berkeley's online school. It should probably go without saying, but I think a solid education in music and the business that surrounds it is pretty key. That's why I'm passionate about things like this podcast and And uh, the tools for you to develop your art form are more accessible than ever. And with things like Berkeley's online school, you can give yourself an edge no matter where in the world you are. So let's get to my interview with Dave. Well, thanks, Dave, for being on the podcast. Hi, welcome, Kevin. Looking forward to it. <laughs> well, you have quite a history in the music business and a pretty impressive one. Can you uh, just give us a, a quick overview so our listeners that you know that might not be familiar with some of the the projects that you've been a part of in the past have a sense of uh, everything that you've had your hands in? Well, I've tended to work in uh, the intersection of music and technology for my my career. Um, I started in the early synthesizer business. Uh, One of the first three synthesizer companies I was lucky enough to get a job at. Um, And I learned about electronic music and a little bit about business. I started with two uh, other fellows, a company called Star Instruments, which was an electronic drum company. That was back in the late 70s. And we created electronic drums, uh, some basic drum machines, sequencers, sequencers. I went on from that and started a company called Passport Designs, which was the first music software company. That was in 1980. And we uh, we worked on a lot of music software, sequencers, music notation software, digital audio, uh, editing and sound design software. Uh, What we were most uh, proud of from that, era was music notation transcription software. So a lot of what you see today in Finale and Sibelius and in many of the uh, digital audio workstations uh, was software that we really pioneered back in uh, the the beginning of electronic uh, music and computer music. And I was involved with a group of uh, folks that invented MIDI. Uh, We were one of the companies that benefited certainly from that uh, collaboration Uh, and we really thought that we could put a computer in between these instruments that uh, people were trying to get to talk together and that enabled us to record and play back and mix and edit and the whole multi-track recorder that we have today really came out of all that work. Uh, After that, uh, you know, I, I worked in uh, helping some companies get started. I, I was involved with Liquid Audio when they got started, which was really the precursor of a lot of the uh, download services and digital music services that we have today. Uh, and then I got involved with Berkeley College of Music about 10 years ago. And uh, we've created an online music school uh, that we could talk more about. It's berkeleymusic.com. And we're teaching production music business, theory, harmony, ear training, songwriting, guitar, bass, pretty soon vocals, drums, keys, 
uh, everything that's taught at Berkeley we're teaching online. And then I co-wrote a book with my friend Gerd Leonard uh, called The Future of Music about four, I think four years ago, maybe five, where we attempted to predict what was going to happen in the business. And we were fairly accurate. And a lot of that book is still yet to come. Mm-hmm. But I've been having a good time. <laughs> well, we'll talk about the book in, in just a few minutes. But uh, first off, I wanted to hit on uh, your involvement with the Berkeley Online School, Berkeley College of Music. Um, definitely a school that's known around the world. And the cool thing that I think you guys are doing with the online stores, we have so many you know artists that listen to this podcast that are you know may not be near a big city that has a good program or just don't have that kind of access. But through the online school, they can get that education. What what is the it like for a student to attend Berkeley online? It's a, a very, very dynamic environment. You're in communication with your fellow classmates and your teacher on a daily basis through uh, text chats, uh, forums, bulletin boards, uh, occasionally email, Skype. Uh, we're, we're using some video conferencing uh, and we're experimenting, you know, we're trying to make the the interaction better and better all the time. But basically the model is you enroll for a course for 12 weeks. Uh, you go through a week's worth of material uh, on your own primarily. You're reading, you're researching, uh, you may be doing homework, doing projects, you're uploading files, you're getting feedback from your teacher, uh, which is most often a Berkeley faculty member. And also you're getting feedback from other students in the class, and those students are going to be from all over the world. Uh, sometimes there are group projects. You're collaborating with other people. So it depends on the course. Uh, you know, we teach production, so maybe there's a Pro Tools course. You're learning how to, how to mix and uh, edit in Pro Tools and record, uh, or perhaps it's a Reason course. You're, you're learning uh, how to use Reason. Uh, how to produce music with reason or live or uh, logic. Uh, we also have mixing and mastering courses, uh, songwriting courses. So it depends on the, the nature of the course. Um, then you'll go through those 12 weeks of material. There's homework, there's tests, there's quizzes, there's projects. Um, and, you know, the final project in a business course might be to write a marketing plan for your band or a business plan for a company that you want to start or artist management course may, uh, you know, final project is actually managing an artist and, and moving their career to the next level and sort of lining up all your ducks, Mm -hmm. what you need to do to help that artist that you've learned in the past 12 weeks. So it's, you know, it's the real thing. It's not easy. These courses are, are challenging. Uh, they're full college credit. Um, we have a lot of programs in place where you might study three or four or ten courses in a row over time. Uh, music business and technology is a very popular program. Uh, guitar programs, uh, music production programs. So these are certificate programs, and at the end of you know maybe a year, you will get a certificate from Berkeley in a certain area. And we have students from all over the world now. There's probably about 30,000 people who have participated in the online school. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's great. It, you should definitely check it out. Is the online school completely independent of the, the classes that are happening in person at the, the college? Okay. So you, can, you could be a student and you could basically do it on your own time as far as like... Um, you don't have specific class times. Would that be correct that you don't have to yeah, log in? And... That is correct. Okay. There's usually a, a uh, one or two chats a week which are live. Um, so you you know you don't have to go to those, but we encourage people to go to those. Uh, and that really you again you're doing it from literally anywhere in the world. Uh, you know, sitting on your uh, couch with your laptop, participating in a chat or a some sort of a live event. But for the most part, you're on your own for the week. And, you know, it's all asynchronous in terms of how you're communicating with people. You're leaving messages and you're reading them later. You're getting feedback. Uh, 
and we're trying to keep it, you know, make it as cool as possible. So there's a lot of audio feedback now that we're incorporating. So if you post a project, uh, maybe it's a recording that you're working on, um, you'll get feedback from your teacher and uh, other students in the class, often in audio form, or maybe alternate tracks that you might want to try, or you know, a different edit to the project. It really depends on on what course it is. You mentioned a lot of courses like uh, music production, music business. Berkeley's also known for just its music program, and well, as well as you know, people studying their instrument. Is that available on the online forum as well, or is that still something that you, if you're going to study like guitar, that you'll probably need to go and do in person? Uh, no, we do have a, a pretty extensive guitar program and bass program now. Uh, we're teaching scales and chords and different uh, styles. Um, we're working on a vocal program and a percussion program. Uh, and we have a couple of keyboard courses. So, you know, it is getting easier to learn to play an instrument remotely. Uh, we've been working on the techniques of doing that. And, you know, we probably have several thousand students studying guitar with us right now. We also teach theory, harmony, and ear training, kind of the core DNA of Berkeley. And those courses are extremely popular. Um, we have another course, two courses in critical listening, which is sort of a backbone of our production program where you, you learn uh, firsthand what, uh, you know, how a record is composed, how a song is recorded, what, what to listen for, how can you apply that to your own work, and what are some of the great you know, classic albums and songs that have been crafted over the years. Why do they work the way that they do? So we teach almost everything that's taught at Berkeley College of Music on the ground is taught at berkeleymusic.com online, and usually by the same teachers. Hmm. I'm, I'm kind of curious how the, the feedback might work for like someone who's learning guitar since it's you know, somewhat of a skill that you're learning as opposed to, you know, studying how to, you know, studying about the music business and learning information that you can prove that, you know, how do you get feedback about uh, your guitar playing over the internet? Well, it depends on, uh, you know, the assignment that you have. You may be posting an audio file. You may be posting a video file. So you'd get feedback based on, you know, what was the assignment, uh, so you could get feedback from the teacher on technique and hand position, uh, or you could get feedback, you know, in terms of phrasing and, and how you move up and down the fretboard. It really depends on what the assignment is. But it's, it's, very, uh, it's very effective. There's a lot of people that are, uh, you know, learning to play instruments and improve their technique, mm -hmm. which is really the whole thing. I mean, yeah. you know, if you're coming to this class and you can't play at all, well, you know, you'll get, <laughs> you'll go a certain distance in those 12 weeks. But if you can already play, we can definitely sharpen your skills and your technique. What kind of technology does uh, the, the student need to have on their end in order to uh, most effectively interact with the online school? The, the most important thing is, uh, you know, a, a uh, reasonably new laptop, some a machine that you purchased in the last couple of years, and a fast internet connection. Those are the two, you know, main components. The, the faster the internet connection, the better the experience is going to be for you if you're using audio and video or uploading, you know, Pro Tools sessions or big, big files. Uh, and, it, you know, any modern laptop, anything, you know, that Apple's producing at this point or Dell or anybody else, uh, all you need. And if you're taking a course that requires software, then we provide the software, um, usually in combination with the manufacturer at a discount for the student. So if you're going to take a Reason course, um, we have a deal with propeller heads where you could get Reason at an educational price. And the same with Live and uh, many of the other applications. Is there a, an acceptance process for the online school, or can anyone just uh, go and take a class? Uh, for the most part, anyone can come and take a class. Some classes do have pre prerequisite uh, either knowledge, experience, or you know another class that you have to take ahead of it. 
Um, and there are, there are some tests at the beginning where, you know, while you're thinking about enrolling in a course, we'll give you a little quiz to take, you know, before you enroll for you to convince yourself whether you're really ready for the course or not. Can mm-hmm. you get through the quiz? Do you have the sort of prerequisite knowledge we're looking for? Uh, and if you can, then, you know, you, you go right ahead and take the class. And if not, then maybe you want to step back and take a an easier class to start with. Hmm. Well, I, I was recently talking to a, an instructor down at Full Sail University in Orlando. Are you familiar with Full Sail? I'm, I'm sorry. And uh, they were telling me about a, a student that said, um, if the music business is falling apart, why should I pay money to study the music business and attempt to go into that field? Which I thought was based off some some misguided information that the media tends to play up. But uh, do you have any comments on that of why you think it's still important to, to know the music business if you're interested in that field and that there, there's still plenty of opportunity out there? There's no question that there's plenty of opportunity. Um, it the game, as you know, and many of your listeners know, is completely changed, and the power is in the hand of the artist way more today than ever before. But with that, you know, with that being said, there's a lot more that you need to know about uh, about how to move your career forward, and you know what marketing techniques work, what online techniques work, um, how to organize a a business around yourself so that you can make some money. Um, So it's very important. And what we've created, uh, particularly in the business program at Berkeley music is very fresh, very forward looking courses um, like the future of music course or music marketing uh, using the internet or artist management uh, or music publishing or entrepreneurship. These are all courses that have been designed in the last, you know, couple of years to be very, very forward leaning. What do you need to know to make it as an independent artist, you know, without going for that brass ring of the label's going to sign me and I'm going to be set forever. Forget about that. How are you going to do it yourself with your friends or with your team? And that's, That's really what we're teaching um, in in the business end of things. In the production end of things, you know, the business has gotten creation of music and distribution and promotion of it has gotten so technical that you need to know how to use the latest software. I mean, it's one thing to buy it and install it on your machine, but it's something completely different to know how to use that software to your advantage and how to, you know, use a digital audio workstation product. What what do you really do with that? How do you engineer? How do you produce? Um, how do you arrange? All of those things are things that we teach at Berkeley Music. And, you know, you can have a decent career in the music industry the, these days. You just have to do a lot of, more of the work yourself, and mm-hmm. we try and help you with that. Well, since you're at Berkeley there with, with so many students and faculty that are that are thinking about these issues and working on them, are there any new innovations or ideas that have popped up recently that have caught your attention? Maybe a student said, hey, what do you think about this? And you're like, huh, that's a good idea. I hadn't thought about that. Do, do you have get in many conversations like that? Sure. I mean, one of the great things about Berkeley, whether it's the, you know, the college itself, we have 4,000 students here uh, in Boston or in the online school where you know, right now there are about 3,000 students studying online. So 7,000 people actively engaged in making music. They come up with all sorts of cool ideas. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, the impact of social media on music promotion is something that's changing every day. Uh, And so we, we teach that in some of these courses and the assignments are often to go out and, you know, try something new. You know, Twitter is out for, it's two years old or three years old. It's a brand new thing. How can you use that to promote your band? Or how can you use that if you're an artist manager or running an indie label um, to promote your artists? Mm -hmm. That's just one of, you know, a hundred things that happen quite often. The the advantage of the online school... um, not unlike CD baby is that, you know, you can try stuff really when you think of it. Mm -hmm. So 
just like you can tweak your website and you know create mailing list opportunities and tie that into tickets and your shows and your merchandise, all of that, we can be pretty nimble in the online school. So we're constantly revising the courses as we learn more and you know people come to us exactly as you said, hey man, look at this. I tried this and it worked and you know, sure enough that we'll we'll make that part of the mm-hmm. you know, the curriculum if it's if it's valid for people. Mm-hmm. Well you mentioned Twitter and uh I've become a Twitter addict lately and I noticed that uh this morning you posted something about uh, that there's a two hundred dollar scholarship available for the online school. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Uh yeah, that is actually a special scholarship that we're offering through March 2nd. So I don't know that that's going to be valid at the point where this podcast runs. Okay. But, you know, what we found is that, um, you know, people are struggling right now in, in, you know, trying to make ends meet and, you know, people are getting laid off and, you know, they want to turn to music as a career path. And sometimes it's a little difficult. So we've, uh, decided that we would try uh, for this quarter uh, offering a, a pretty substantial scholarship to, to new people who are coming to the online school to try and help them, you know, get started and, you know, maybe improve their chances, you know, to have some more success or ne- network them in with some other people that are working on similar things. I mean, that's the great thing about the online school. You're going to meet people from all over the world and we have students who are now recording together, touring together, working on projects, building studios, starting companies, you know, Mm -hmm. just because they met in the online school. Mm -hmm. What does the average uh, online course cost to take? Uh, It's about a thousand bucks, uh, give or take. Some of them are, are a little less and some of them are a little more. The production courses tend to be a little higher around 1200 uh, but it's still cheaper than uh, taking courses on campus a little bit uh, and it's it's cheaper than a lot of the alternatives that you have it's more expensive than buying a DVD or a book but you're really getting you're plugging yourself into a community and you're getting the opportunity to have 12 weeks of interaction and feedback with a teacher from Berkeley mm-hmm who will help you. The classes are only 20 students or less uh, and a teacher. So you have the chance to get some pretty focused uh, interaction and feedback and direction from somebody who knows what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's really what the value is. You, you mentioned the books and DVDs. Uh, one thing that I think is really cool that you guys have done is that uh, all the resources are, I'm assuming all of them, are available at the, the bookstore online there at, uh, is it berkeleypress.com? Is that the? Yep. Web? Yeah, and you've got some great resources there. I find myself uh, browsing them quite often. I'm just trying to see what latest materials people are using. So that's definitely something that, you know, if someone's not ready to make the investment in an online school, I would definitely recommend that they check those books out because those are all the resources for the classes. Am I correct in, in that? Yeah, for, to a large extent. A lot of those books are, you know, required text in the in the classrooms. Well, let's, uh, speaking of books, before we close out the interview, I wanted to highlight uh, the book that you co-wrote a couple years back, The Future of Music Manifesto for the Digital Music Revolution. And uh, that came out in, in 2005, and I, I'm kind of curious, now that it's 2009, um, what your thoughts are on, on some of the ideas you presented in that book and it, how things have changed and if they've gone in a direction you thought or maybe skewed a little differently or, or what your take on that was. That's a good question. Um, it's hard to answer in a few minutes. <laughs> um, I think that it's uh, it's taking longer for a you know, kind of viable alternative distribution mechanism for recorded music to really take form. I don't think it's iTunes. I don't think it's Rhapsody or Napster um, or Amazon or eMusic. Mm-hmm. I, I think that those are all, uh, when we look back uh, on this era, we're going to see that those were stepping stones towards something much bigger and more ubiquitous yet to form. 
Um, I think that that will probably happen in more in the mobile space than in the PC space. Mm-hmm. So it's taken a little longer, I think, in our in our view. Although we predicted 2015 as a scenario, the beginning of the book talks about you know the scenario where music's flowing like water mm-hmm. and you have it all around you, and there's various programs that help you, um, like Pandora or Last FM or Shazam, help you find music and kind of sequence it for yourself. That's all coming. Um, 2015, you know, six, six years away. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think it will happen more in the mobile space. Um, I, I'm also encouraged somewhat by the bigger labels, uh, willingness to try things in the last two or three years that they were not willing to try in the past. Um, I think that that's a good thing for the industry. And I think that the indie, artists and indie labels are somewhat paving the way for what the new models are going to look like. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, which is smaller, right? I don't think the music industry <laughs> overall can be big and bigger than it ever was, but it's going to be through the aggregation of smaller efforts, mm-hmm. uh, of artists that are, you know, the whole middle class of artists idea that everyone's talking about. You know, we, we talked about that in the book, but now it's starting to actually happen. You know, I could see CD Baby as a perfect example of middle class of artists beginning to emerge. Uh, some stuff they're working on at Top Spin uh, and Reverb Nation is encouraging that uh, uh, community to accelerate and people to be able to make some money doing music on a you know, smaller, more manageable scale rather than, re- again, reaching for that brass ring and hoping that, you know, you get the half a million dollar advance from the label. I mean, that's just not going to happen anymore. Mm-hmm. But can you figure out a way to make a a career making, you know, 50 or 80 or $100,000 a year or more? Sure, you can. And many, many people are doing it. Before we started the interview, you told me that you're uh, working on a a new resource along those lines. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about it? Give us a little teaser before we close out the interview. Sure. Um, in the coming months, maybe in May or June, um, I'm working on a project called music power network. And the idea is to take the concepts from the future of music book and many of the things that have happened since the book was published and, uh, put them in a form that's, uh, practical advice for people trying to move their career forward. So if you're a writer or a performer, uh, we will provide tools and information and uh, workbooks and resources for you to help figure out you know, a reasonable business plan for yourself to move forward. What's the team you need? What are the resources you need? What are the steps you need to take uh, to move forward? And a similar uh, track for people wanting to start businesses. You want to start a management company. You want to start a marketing company, uh, maybe some sort of digital music service. How do you organize your ideas and put it in a form where you could create a plan, and in an action plan or a business plan to help you move forward? And who are the people and partners and resources that you need to connect with so that you can take advantage of the sort of new music economy that's forming, Mm -hmm. replacing the big labels with more of a grassroots uh, do-it-yourself, put it together, put a team together. Uh, So this is all coming. Look forward uh, probably in May or June, musicpowernetwork.com. Is that something that's going to be like an interactive thing through the website, or is it going to be like a resource you buy and just... use at home or whenever? No, it's interactive. The the idea behind Music Power Network is to try and create something that um, can change over time. As as new things happen in the market and new companies come up and new partnering and uh, new, new ideas come into the market that we can update the service to reflect that. Uh, unlike a book, you know, the, the bad thing about the book was, man, as soon as we wrote it down and it went to the printer, there was all these things that we wanted to add to it. And yeah. We couldn't. <laughs> so we want to make something more dynamic. Well, cool. That, that sounds very exciting. And I look forward to seeing what you do with that. And I'm sure uh, plenty of our listeners will be checking out uh, 
the Berkeley Online School and also be looking forward to this uh, new resource as well. So I thank you for coming on the podcast. Cool, Kevin. My pleasure. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have fun. (laughs) Well, that's going to do it for this edition of the podcast. Be sure to head over to Berkeley's website and check out all the courses they offer. And if you're not ready to take a course at the moment, at least check out all the great books and DVDs they have available at berkeleypress.com. I know I browse through them every once in a while. And if you have attended one of their online courses, I would love to hear how it went and uh, I would ask for you to share your feedback in the comment section for this episode. Just go to cdbabypodcast.com and leave a comment under episode 49. That way we can all hear about your experience and maybe ask you a couple questions. Well, in one of our previous episodes, we had a request to start up a forum, and I recently noticed that our Facebook page actually has a discussion board built into it, and uh, there's been some discussion already taking place on it. So if you're on Facebook and uh, you are interested in the idea of having an indie music discussion board where you can talk amongst uh, the indie music community and people that listen to this podcast check that out and uh, maybe that's a good solution for that request for the time being and if it uh, builds momentum maybe we'll branch it out into a, a separate forum that lives somewhere else on the web and finally our listener line is always open feel free to call in and comment on this episode or any previous episode plus we love hearing tips and tricks that you have that you like to share on the podcast our number is 206 426 5683 and our email address is just info at cdbabypodcast.com well we'll catch you next time bye been listening to the CD Baby DIY Musician Podcast, broadcasting from Portland, Oregon, USA. 